your sense of community when you're free rolling through the mountains rolling through the valley rolling through paradise with me hello everyone welcome to the show well my guest today is a documentary filmmaker he's a photographer creative director producer and a solo dad ladies and gentlemen it's time to meet was it desiree i've already forgotten desiree <laughs> kokuvi amuzu muzo right. amuzu muzu i go i had it right the first time yeah <laughs> welcome to the show <laughs> thanks for having me uh my um oh and you'll have a aka also known as uh, click critic that's wow goodness gracious <laughs> that's that is uh that that's from my pi days oh okay that's why i had yeah well like you'll get into that i'm sure we'll get it <laughs> there's Here's a lot here you're the founder um at find you in the valley that's right yeah that's the one that i'm known for right now yeah now what is that well basically um te technically it's find you well find you media um is the is my company name um find you in the valley uh, is the social media or the, um, I guess, kind of the extension of the Find You magazine. Well, initially I said magazine, but I've kind of since uh, changed that thought process. But initially it was Find You magazine and Find You in the Valley was just about the valley. Um, sort of an extension from it because I do have Find You in the city. Okay. Find You on the coast. And it was just an opportunity for me to use you know, that thought process of finding you mm. um, in the neighborhood and the local that, you, that you're in. So by finding you, who is it you are finding? <laughs> it's a great question. Um, you know, I, I think it's uh, finding, finding oneself. So like, you know, um, if you, if you find yourself in, into, in farming, Mm -hmm. you can find your your purpose in in fine uh, farming um <clears throat> kind of the the uh uh i guess you would you what would you call it the not the motto well i guess the motto potentially is uh um and i'm a little bit under the weather so i gotta actually have to look at it uh explore okay. um with purpose mm -hmm. um is it that is that right let me just check it <laughs> I have it written down on one of the uh on on my main page. Yeah. Um explore with purpose, live with meaning. Oh. And yeah, and so that so it's more of a thing for me, right? So I, I wanted to I wanted to do something that I, I enjoyed as a kid, which was you know, documentary filmmaking from uh, National Geographic photographers and filmmakers. Um, I lived in I lived in West Africa for a brief period of time with my parents. We didn't have a lot of, um, you know, normal <laughs> the television that I think a lot of folks in North America grew up with. I grew up with black and white TV. Um, you know, only uh, you know only TV going on on the weekends. Mm -hmm. during the week I you know I don't think I was allowed to watch anything um and so I grew there was it was cowboys uh, <laughs> uh and uh westerns and Tarzan movies <laughs> and uh I like those were the movies that I that I knew yeah and once in a while there'd be a colored movie that would come on on the weekends and then another big thing that was huge was National Geographic we'd, we'd get shown every weekend mm -hmm. uh, in the the country that I was living in Cote d'Ivoire in Africa and I enjoyed it and to the, to the point that I actually would go out and um I would <laughs> I'd catch lizards and try to tag them <laughs> and uh release them into the wild again and see if they would come back to me and I would somehow know more about them because I tagged them <laughs> probably did more damage to them than I did because oh. I'd paint a little bit of their tail or something right um so yeah so National Geographic so anyway th those boyhood dreams mm -hmm. um eventually um 
just fascinated my mind. They, they, they really captured my thinking about documentary filmmaking when I went to school for film. Right. And, uh, you know, um, when I came up with find you, um, find you magazine, it was kind of that, well, you know, maybe I can self publish, um, the idea of working for a company. So what would the company look like? And find you was born from that. It, the Fraser Valley was born from that initially. Right. The Fraser Valley Instagram was my first kick at the can. <laughs> okay. Believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, no. What is a, a click critic? What is what is that all about? So I was a I was in uh, I was in loss prevention for many years. Um, after I was married, I um, uh, film work wasn't conducive to my marriage at least for my partner at the time. And, um, but I still would take photographs on the side and, um, you know, eventually I got myself a Canon Rebel or no Canon T2. It's either T2i, T, like it was one of the first Canons that was able to uh, attach a, a microphone oh. adapter and you could film um, with this, this, uh, this DSLR. So, you know, I was able to take photographs, which was great because I was having my, 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 my firstborn and my daughter. Um, and then, uh, you know, I noticed you could record with it. So it's kind of like I took some of the schooling that I had and I was, and I had this, this little <laughs> amazing little portable studio and so I just kind of kept up with my stuff while I was being, while I was working in loss prevention, but the job that I did in loss prevention, um, I kind of worked my way up into investigations. I, I, you know, I started off as a lot of LPOs um, do, I, they were called, you know, they're not called this anymore, potentially, but we're called store detectives or store dicks. Okay. That's what we're called. And um, I, I worked into the investigations of, of, you know, some not so fun characters. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, it was just, it was just petty theft, but sometimes it was a little bit more than that. And um, so I kind of came up with this name, uh, Click Critic, and it was actually the first website that I purchased. And my wife at the time and I, we kind of thought about uh, maybe a name for a website that had to do with reviewing things and so it came about from that and I kept it for a long time I kept it because I didn't want to put my name out there on the web and um, well you know after my marriage expired uh, that you know when I was leaving the the uh, investigations field it it was fine I, I let go of it so yeah, hence it says AK Click Critic, and I don't know why it still says that, but I probably remove it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I find it interesting when there's things there that that you did in yeah. the past, you know. So, yeah. So it's still all part of who you are or were, right? Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. I like that. Uh, so now it says you're a creative director and producer. Um, so yeah. Small what are, time. <laughs> small yeah, time. No, that's fine. That's no. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, listen, I got a small time interviewer, so there you go. Oh, hey. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> um, right. so what are some of the things you have created and uh, directed and produced? Yeah, so uh, you know, all, again, all my stuff is 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 mostly self produced. Mm -hmm. Um, and find you, find you in the valley uh, has I would say there's two documentaries on there that I. That I well, I think I think there's two that I really like. One of them though is, I think will be a continuation, and that is Welcome uh, Welcome Home. It was an interview with uh, a girl by the name of uh, uh, Angie, um, and she is or she had recently claimed her um, her heritage, her indigenous heritage, and um gotten the status card and you know re uh reconnected with her family mm -hmm. um and so that was a nice little short you know 10 minute 12 minute documentary um 
and it, I have a few more people lined up to continue that kind of series and maybe like three or four people that I can um, interview. Um, but yeah, that's that's one that I'm really proud of. It hasn't been shown in any festivals. It's, it's just on YouTube. Okay. Um, I've been working recently with uh, University of Fraser Valley and, and uh, the um, um, research department. I've been working with Teresa Carlson. And um, we've, so far, we've um, finished two two shorts, two short documentaries um, on Stolo artists. Um, oh, nice. Uh, yeah, really, really nice uh, videos. Um, uh, Teresa's the director, uh, and I've been uh, basically the editor and director of photography with her. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so far we've uh, interviewed... Uh, um, uh, um, Rocky LaRock, who's well known uh, for his his artwork, is a um, a car carver, and uh, and as well as uh, Francis uh, Horn Senior, mm -hmm. um, and you know both very unique and different uh, uh, different types of uh, artists, but uh, local and and um, represent very much. Um, uh individually their community uh, in a in a great way and so yeah that's been really nice to be part of those projects yeah. and there's a few more that are coming out from it so it's not the only one we're working on three more um one with uh um Nikki Larock which is she's a she's a, also a stall artist with a lot of like clothing and designs and such and uh um, we have Fred. Oh, I can't remember Fred's last name. <laughs> uh, it'll come to me later on. Um, Fred and Johnny. Okay. I can't remember their last names for this to save my own life right now, but maybe it's the it's the medicine. But uh, blame it on the medicine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So th those are the those are the ones that I'm I'm actually the most proud of. I think a lot of the other ones that I've done, I, I did one interview with. Um, Dan Ost Ustenbrink, uh, he owns, uh, well, they have Farm Market on Lickman um, and that whole farm. Yeah. And, um, you know, I did an interview with him just at the start of the pandemic. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I've, done a, I've had a few different meetings with him and conversations with him. And he kind of was the you're just a kind of a welcoming person to to the community for me. You know, I moved here in 2013 and in, into Chilliwack in 2013, and and um, he, I was going through. You know, very quickly I went through a a divorce um, or separation, and a whole bunch of things happened in my personal life. I got injured in my old job pretty badly, and yeah, so you know, when I was I was like really transitioning from that world to you know coming back to my creative kind of self. Mm -hmm. He was there and he was a great person to kind of go and film and talk to. And yeah, so I did a little documentary or short short interview really with mm -hmm. him. And that's also online. Um but I haven't put anything in festivals. So I don't know if that calls me, call, uh, brings me up as a, an emerging artist. If I were to ever do that um, at some point, it might. Um, but yeah, I'd love to see some of my work in festivals at some point. Yeah. Shortly. Shortly. <laughs> yeah, that, no, that would be awesome. I think, yeah. I love, yeah. I love that. I love what you're doing. It sounds really wonderful, you know? Yeah. Uh, Thanks, uh, there's so many beautiful, fantastic artists out there, right? Local yeah. artists. Yeah, uh, it's really cool. I think it's really. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so you've done a lot of that now, different things too. Uh, oh wait a minute! It says producer director at Surrey Six Hundred Four. Oh gosh, yeah, that's right. I forgot all about Surrey Six Hundred Four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good call. Uh, so I worked with Damon Beatty, who is the owner of 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 Surrey Six Hundred Four, um, and um, he kind of he yeah he was. So he had a volunteer position come up. Like, right, you know, come and do an article at 50 bucks an article. 
Um, and that was just not my style. I don't love I don't love writing. <laughs> I, I I think it'd be I I can do an okay job, but um, the way I think, I really have to watch my spell check. It's it's horrible. Um, uh, you know, I'm thinking three lines ahead of what I'm writing, so I end up missing a bunch of things. I'm sure there's a there's a reason around that, but um, yeah, he let me come about and work on the social media for 3604 and ended up doing a lot of little um video and and um and just social media management with him and uh so yeah we were we before he sold it so I don't think it's in it's private information anymore um he's sold Surrey 604 it is now owned by same owners of da- as Daily Hive and um uh, you know, when he sold it, he's still actively, um, uh, you know, an influencer for Surrey 604, but it's not doing that much. It's not really uh, the priority for um, what's the agency behind Daily Hive? Hold on a sec. Let me get that fun fact for you. Um, Daily Hive is owned. Daily Hive is owned. I'm going to know it's going to be super simple. <laughs> it's Muhammad who owns it. Um, oh. oh, it's not telling me here. Oh well, they're the same folks that own the Fra- Fraser Valley Current. Okay, <laughs> how's that? We'll leave it at that. Oh, 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 that's, oh, of course, Tyler. um, Tyler is uh, with, um, what? Olson. Yep, Tyler Olson. Yeah, yeah. Um, Yeah, they're they're the media company that owns Fraser Valley Current, owns Surrey 604, Uh owns owns Daily Hive. Okay. Um, And uh, that was, so that was a purchase that happened, yeah, a couple years ago, I a few couple of years ago, a few years ago, just before, just at the start of the pandemic, or just after, right. um, and there was a a slim window where I might have gone and worked there. I did a, a couple articles during the holidays um, uh, over there, so you can if you look up Surrey six hundred four, you'll see my articles there. Um, but I really wanted to do video, and um, yeah, I. They're not really a video company. Um, obviously, Daily Hive is. Daily Hive has kind of news bits and so forth. Um, but um, they're more of a newsletter yeah. company. Fraser Valley Current is a newsletter. So it, Yeah, it, and it's important to do what, what, what you're passionate about, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. You know, just you start treading water the wrong way. It's, yeah. it's not that doesn't feel good, yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was part of a uh, this this comedy thing, and where and and the person wanted to write my lines, and I said, well, no, oh. I speak like that, you know, it's just <laughs> more, you know, so I can't do that, so I just walked away from that one. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So it's like, yeah, you got to be who you are. That's right. Yeah. So now, and no, you were also the former regional corporate investigator at right. TJX Canada. What was what's TJX stand for? Own winners, home sense, and marshals. Oh, okay. So that's that's that was kind of where I I um so you know I I said store detective. Yes. Okay. But essentially, that's what I worked. I worked my way into a regional investigations position. Right. And yeah, we traveled like so. We did. I had all of BC. Yeah. Um, Eventually, (laughs) we had more people that we hired, and so we split that up a bit. (laughs) Uh, And then, uh, but yeah, there was it, it was a great. It was a tough experience at times, but a good experience. I learned a lot of things there. Um, yeah, I did. I did a lot of interviewing. So you know, I dealt. I dealt with, unfortunately, internal fraud investigations. Uh-huh. There was a lot of interviews and and so forth. Um, and then I, but I also dealt with uh, organized retail crime uh, at a at an okay level. Mm-hmm. Um, and but it, yeah. Throughout that time, it was, um, I kind of realized that I, I really like to, uh, what was that here? 
Um, I really like to know people's stories and <laughs> I hear, yeah 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 right and I, I really enjoyed I really enjoyed knowing about people I and I and I felt like you know I was uh I was I wasn't able to help you know I I mean I was helping the company sure when I make her an arrest and so forth uh that was great I'm helping my community to to an extent of course um yeah, so it's absolutely it's a it's a respectable and good job um but it wasn't my it wasn't my passion you know and um you know I was interested uh, there was a couple projects that I was involved with uh out in Surrey they have a boost and bus program where they you know uh LP or or investigators would work with um in collaboration with the police who would run an operation where you know um because the investigators had maybe more more um experience dealing with folks that were coming into their establishments committing theft and so forth instead of making the arrest they would base, basically make the spots and pass over information and make the longer surveillance while police would make the arrests and so it was more it was um it had more teeth to it mm -hmm. and it uh, combated uh, more prolific offenders, uh, not just petty stuff. They wouldn't really deal with a lot of the smaller things, but they would deal with some of the the prolific offenders that were going around in Surrey. And um, I got a chance to to bring my camera along for a couple of the <clears throat> couple of the outings, and yeah, I enjoyed that. I, I it was different. I was like, okay, you know, it was meant more for the program itself. Mm -hmm. as learning for the program I was like man you know I it might be a little bit more of a challenge but I'd rather be a documentary filmmaker yeah. uh filming the the you know objectively filming what was happening uh between you know folks in law enforcement and, and folks that might be houseless or uh might be um you know suffering uh some some sort of uh you know uh addiction of, of some sort or other other various problems and capturing that and maybe it maybe it helps the community more to know about these things yeah. in detail potentially so I agree it would help them you know because I, I I live in a, a 55 plus building so a lot of people are older they're kind of afraid of the homeless and I'm thinking no they're not hurting you like they're yeah. really not hurting you, you know right. so, yeah there's you know you can walk by them they're not going to attack you they don't do any of that at least yeah. I know of right yeah right, right yeah you know I I yeah I, I like I I don't know enough about what's going around in, in Chilliwack um you know I have eyes mm -hmm. <laughs> like everyone else and uh you know you you can see I think you can see it everywhere yes. you know the, the the houseless uh situation is is uh is is increasing the you know i i, I you know what I mean, maybe i won't say i don't know what the support systems are i haven't really gone d deep into that mm -hmm. um i've thought about going deep into it i think it's a bit of a logistical challenge a nightmare <laughs> a nightmare potentially uh but i'd love to to document what's happening i mean you've of course you know i did do some work um in, in the downtown east side mm -hmm. that was you know it was only it was only for a couple of projects that we, we were working on with the company um just some surveillance very safe if the surveillance is still deep in the heart of the downtown east side and uh it was tough to see you know i've always it, it was it was it was really hard to see and yet as as bad as as that is right now it's it's spreading and it and it's yeah you know you see it along the highway you see folks that are living out of tents and 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 uh and so for along the high along the river out here yeah. um sorry to interrupt you we're just getting a te i'm getting close. a 10 minute warning here <laughs> okay gotcha yeah no problem that's from zoom we'll have yeah. to you have to come back on um that's but okay you're right and i think that the one of the reasons like there's different reasons for being homeless there's a drug addict there's the people who just because rents are so insane uh, mm -hmm. 
that yeah. like one one rent payment away from being homeless. Yeah. You know? So we have so many factors, and if the government doesn't step in, okay, mm. let me just get this out of the way. There we go. I had to think of yeah. we might be cut off mid sentence, so I don't want that to happen. No um, problem. So we'll end it there, but, but like I said, we'll definitely have you on again. Um, Sounds good. Yeah, so just stay on camera. So uh, everybody you've been listening to, and I'm going to forget how to pronounce his name again, because it's <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Desiree Kukuvi Amuzu. Yeah, it's great. All it's right. Great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate you, and I hope you continue to uh, watch and take care, and peace out, folks. Peace out. <laughs>